లావడం ఓకే నా సో దిస్ వర్ల్డ్ ఈస్ దిస్ అ కమ్యూనిటీ వర్షన్ ఆఫ్ డేటా బ్రిక్స్ ఓకే సో కమ్యూనిటీ వర్షన్ ఈస్ నథింగ్ బట్ అ ఫ్రీ వర్షన్ అండ్ యూ కెన్ యూజ్ మ్యాక్సిమమ్ ఫీచర్స్ హియర్ బట్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ ప్లేస్ టు ప్రాక్టీస్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ గుడ్ ప్లేస్ టు గెట్ ఫెమిలియర్ విత్ డేటా బ్రిక్స్ ఓకే బట్ ఓన్లీ ద లిమిటేషన్ హియర్ ఈస్ దెర్ ఈస్ నో జాబ్స్ ఫెసిలిటీ హియర్ and you you will never start any jobs here because it's a community version it will never uh, allow you to start it and uh, going with uh, computation engine whenever you are trying to create a cluster it will never allow you to go with uh, maximum features it will only allow you to create one cpu with two cores and uh, 15.3 gb memory that's it it's only single slot there are no workers for this these two are only the limitations here so, right sir. yeah let me showing black screen blank screen maybe it's hmm. uh, uh it might be your network issue is this That's the same for remind okay. i can see yes yeah that might be a problem with your network and the tool do one thing just uh, just do drop off and rejoin it mm-hmm. all right I'll, i'll i'll just wait for you is it fine krishna okay i think so it is working for you now i'm still same i am just trying to connect in mobile okay it might be problem in your uh, new version which os you are using windows or linux windows okay i'm also using the latest version for windows let's try definitely it will appear any update try to join with other device you better to use your mobile to join for today and you can uninstall that from your uh, machine and then rejoin yeah. Mm-hmm. able to see here yeah okay okay
uh, now so these two are the uh, major limitations here you are not supposed to uh, extend your cluster with more than one machine and uh, you cannot start your jobs these two are the limitations the remaining all features will work as same as uh, uh, what it is paid version or licensed version whatever you can say all right let's go back to the home so uh, here it is the launch page or uh, landing page or dashboard or home page whatever what, whatever you say it okay so this is the home page so here we can see all the informations so the first thing the left side is a menu or action items and uh, on the wall you can see all kind of immediate actions so here we are selecting the data science and engineering, right? So that's why you can see the data science related uh, stuff. All right. So if you are going to select this as a machine learning, you can see all machine learning related stuff. Okay, probably machine learning is not our part. It's a completely different. All right. So going back to data science and you can see here the pin, oh, Shit. Here the pin is uh, bold style, right? That means it is pinned. I mean to say it is default, right? That's why whenever we are logging in into the data breaks, it automatically this wall will appear, right? So, yeah, uh, coming back to the wall now. Here you can see all the items uh, in place. So the first item will uh, basic basic thing about the Databricks, the, the tutorials or uh, start guide or learner guide, whatever you can say, right? It's a shorter guide. And of course, if you want it, you can go with the help tool or documentation tool of this Databricks to get more familiar with this one, right? So let's go with this uh, tool first. So let's see what it will show, come on. So here, uh, it can say how to create, uh, I mean, uh, how to use commands here, how to use Python here to start, because here it is showing majorly either Python or SQL, because we are, uh, I mean, we are just going to use Python or SQL majorly, and in very rare cases only we are going to use Scala. Majority of the cases we are not going with Scala because we are, we are familiar with uh, Python only, right? So that's the biggest thing. Right. And also why we are not going with Scala, I know, of course, Scala is native for uh, Spark and Java is also uh, sibling for Scala, but still we are not using Java or Scala here because we are using Python. Okay, Python is not native language for this one, for, for Databricks, but as a general purpose uh, programming language and the biggest tool in the uh, uh, what it is data science artificial intelligence or machine learning so data breaks allow you to write program with python okay to make it uh, possible they are using pi spark I mean to say python for spark package right we'll see that later points all right more even uh sql uh, the SQL is common for everything. So you can see this notebook, whatever they have given as a quick start notebook that is with SQL. So the SQL is common, whatever the language you can use here, it doesn't matter, right? So let's go back from this. All right. So, and uh, here you can see, uh, we'll come later for this, complete all the options. We can see on the screen now. So upgrade button because we are into the community edition that's why it is showing that upgrade button here doesn't matter if you want really an upgrade pack upgraded package you can go with this one but it is somewhat costly because the the because um, based on your computation capacity it will charge you right and now it's a quick help what you can do what not you can add. right so and uh, here is a application. So what this guy is saying, you know, uh, before going into these two, they want you to go into the settings and set up the, the account properly, right? So let's start first thing. Uh, so here 
you can see as we have seen this is a tutorial notebook quick start notebook and here is a file uploader so this is nothing but uh it will it will ask you to upload if you require to upload the data you can ask this part okay to upload the, the data file into uh, the databricks environment uh, or if already the data is ex, uh, exported into the databricks if you want to uh, explore the data or explore that uploaded files you can go into this environment okay so the same facility will come from data Okay, I'll show you that as well in later points. And now the third option, create notebook. Create notebook is nothing but for our project, we have to create, uh, might be one notebook or more than one notebook based on the requirement, right? So why to create more than one notebook? So the, 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 there are specific reasons. If you are going to uh, create a project, if you are going to do some transformation data in a project, so, that might be a single notebook to load the data and transform the data, right? But to do that operations, you might require some kind of uh, configurations and some kind of user-defined functions. So to make these all possible, you have to create more than one because uh, if you get all together, that might be a biggest confusion every time, right? And they are not much reusable, okay? So what, what what developers will do in a real time scenario, you know, they will create a separate notebook for configurations and separate notebook for common used functions. Okay, commonly used UDFs, right? And then they are going to do uh, actual business logic uh, or data transformation node, which is highly responsible to transform the data and utilize that uh configs notebook and a commonly used udfs notebook okay so we can create the notebook here so the same thing we can create here we can do here new notebook so whatever create notebook will do new notebook will do the same uh, along with we can do the same with create you can see whatever options here the same or up here here right notebook table and cluster See, all three are available here. The new job is not available because uh, we are not into the paid version. We are into the, uh, what it is, community version, right? And uh, uh, ML flow environment, this is nothing but uh, for machine learning. We are not into the machine learning, so we are not going to get it, okay? Because machine learning is a uh, next level. Import libraries in the sense, uh, if you, who want to import any uh, what what we can say uh, any third party tools or any uh, packages or any uh, <coughs> excuse me or any kind of uh, uh, outside outside environment uh, ipython books ipython is nothing but notebook which is created from either databricks or uh, uh, jupyter right so you can go with these all and you can uh, load that jar files into, I mean, load that package files into the Databricks environment where we can get the support from this third party libraries or the packages. All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, these are the major stuffs, right? Go back to this one. And uh, read documentation is nothing but just docs.databricks because uh, it's a complete documentation about Databricks. Okay, so you, you can get everything in and out of the uh, Databricks here, right? Of course, you can see only five options here, but if you click on that, it will start extending everything. Okay, so data science and engineering. You can see how many are there in the data science and engineering. So by clicking on each one, it might be extend again, right? It's not a small thing. So this docs.databricks will contain complete in and out information about the Databricks and PySpark. Okay, if you are to get familiar with uh, Spark, Apache Spark, right? Uh, you can see the complete stuff here right so getting started 
So you can see what is Spark and how it can work, how to load, how to read, okay, how to print, right? Everything you can see. All right. If you if you have any problem, also you can come here and you can see it later. Even not even while loading, not I mean, uh, not even when you whenever you are into the training, okay. This will most helpful part whenever you are into the what it is production. All right. So this is a basic environment of our Databricks. All right. So uh, here I'm just taking it as a compiled thing. Let me take it expanded mode. Okay. So now you can see all the options here clearly, right? So uh, as it is, it's a help. Right, you can see uh, different types of uh, helps. Okay, and uh, uh, it's a setting. So you can use uh, user settings and admin console management account. Let, let's see what these are, right? And it is a account where you are logged in into, right? This is my uh, business account, Sysmt IT Labs. Right, most probably Krishna only aware of this in this batch. All right, and here uh, menu options, right? So these menu options is nothing but uh, how does this menu appear? Okay, so it should be collapsed manner. I mean, you can only see the, the icons. Whenever you click on that, you can see remaining options here, right? And uh, expanded, you can see completely expanded or you can take auto. That means whenever you focus on something, it will expand and show all the options whenever you focus out, it automatically collapse back, right? This will more flexible way. I, I prefer to use this probably because I can get my workspace bigger. Whenever I want to uh, use some option from this menu, it will expand whenever I over here, right? That's why I'm using this, that's it. So let's start with settings. Uh, before that, let me explain you what are the different things here. So let me keep it in an expand manner. All right. Now, so it's a just logo and it's a home link. Whenever you click on this one, it will take you wherever you are into the Databricks environment. It doesn't matter. When you click on this, it will take you into this welcome screen. I mean to say landing page. All right. Next to that, we have a drop down where we can see the different environments. So that is data science and engineering environment and ML environment. So Multiple people can use it because um, we are using Databricks, right? What is Databricks? Databricks is nothing but a UI, user interface, web-based user interface for Spark, Apache Spark. Apache Spark is nothing but a big data tool, right? Apache Spark is a highly reputed big data tool, okay? So why, why it is highly repeated? Because Apache Spark, as we have seen earlier, Apache Spark has a biggest flexibility, right? What is that flexibility? So it can compute all the computations in RAM with a number of worker nodes, and it can make as quick as possible. I mean, it can make the response as quick as possible, right? So that's why we are taking uh, Apache Spark as a biggest tool in a big data, right? So Databricks is nothing but Databricks is not a biggest software or something else. Databricks has a UI, user interface for Apache Spark. Okay, if you remember, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back into that, uh, uh, the first, what it is the first presentation and we can see what are the, the Apache things, uh, Apache Spark and what are the different things there, right? So now you can see uh, data science and engineering here and uh, machine learning. So whoever are uh, ML developers or AI developers, they can come to this machine learning part and they can use the Spark for that. Okay, but we are into the data science and engineering. So we are going to use our environment as data science and engineering here and now, uh, create. So whenever you are trying to create something, mean to say that cluster or a table or a notebook, you can come here and you can use this. So this table is nothing but 
uh, what it is. It's nothing but a data table, but it will work inside this, uh, what I can say, work inside this databases here inside uh, what I can say. Uh, it's uh, similar to Hive and it's a native Hive database. All right, so that you can see here by default. So here you can see the data default database. If you want, you can create it from your environment. Right. Right now, I don't have any table. If I want a table, I can click on this and I can give whatever the table I want. So again, uh, it will ask you to create from different environments, either uploading a file or connecting a file from S3 or DBFS, Databricks file system, wherever you have already uploaded your files into file store, tables. And if I have anything, I can see it here, but I, I don't have anything here, right? And other data sources. Excuse me. Uh, it's hell. All right. So other data sources are nothing but other data links, either from uh, cloud database. I mean, cloud database or uh, Redshift is nothing but it's a Amazon. Uh, what, what I can say, it's a one of the bigger. I mean, big data database tool, right? It's a big data database tool. Why we are saying Redshift is a big data database tool, you know, it has a capability to lift petabyte data. You know, what is a petabyte? 1024 terabytes or become as a petabyte, one petabyte. 1024 gigabytes, sorry, terabytes. Right, 1024 terabytes in the sense, 1024 gigabytes each uh, sorry uh, i made a small confusion here so there is a small uh, what it is small computation to make this possible uh, let me take some text here all right uh, so let's see i'll help you with a special notebook. Okay, uh, let me create a notebook here and name first book. Okay, so I'm going to select as a Python and a worker factory, whatever uh, the running cluster you have, you can use that. I have that worker factory, this one. So let's take this. This is a way how to create a notebook and you can use it. So uh, I'm trying to use md is nothing but markdown okay so the calculations the computation or uh, memory calculations are happening just like this so uh, so the the least level uh, computation starts from bits bit is nothing but a bit bit is nothing but either zero or one okay zero or one is a bit okay so it will come back with eight bits eight bits is eight bits is known as eight bits is known as a byte right so now here onwards everything will start Okay, so thousand, sorry, uh, thousand twenty four bytes is known as one KB. Right, so again, it will multiply every time. Thousand twenty four KBs are known as. 1 MB. Right. So this is the biggest thing. You have to be aware of this one. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm explaining you this because some of you might not aware of this kind of uh, calculations. Right. So uh, 1024 
sorry, thousand. It's a, it's my bad. It's a KB. It's a MB, right? Thousand twenty four MBs are known as one GB. All right. Again, thousand twenty four GBs known as one TB. TB in the sense terabyte. Okay, KB in the sense kilobyte. Right, MB in the sense megabyte. GB in the sense gigabyte. TB in the sense terabyte. Okay, uh, again, 1024 TB. 1024 TB is equal to one petabyte. Okay, there are there are additional computer uh, additional calculations as well. We can stop here, right? So this is a capability of Redshift. All right, that's why uh, people will go with this. All right, so let me take it into a special way as it know. So it's a markdown format where we can display the list of items. All right, so this is a, a memory or a bit calculation, right? So this is how we can. Now, where we are, we are into the Databricks, right? Yeah, so uh, this is how we can see it. Uh, where we are, we are into the table, right? So whenever we are into the other uh, data sources, we can see all kind of things here. Okay, Kinesis is nothing but it's a it's a GUI for a database called Aurora, right? So what is Kinesis and Aurora and Redshift, right? Redshift is a big data tool, and Kinesis is a uh, what it is a clustered data tool. Clustered data in the sense, it will never bother about whatever the data behind it, whatever the database or data engine behind it. Okay, it will group together and export that as a single platform to consume the data. Okay, behind it might be used uh, S3, behind it might be used MySQL, behind it might be used uh, uh, Oracle or uh, along with uh, MS SQL or something else, something else, what not. Okay, anything along with anything right it will design it will don't bother about the the behind source so whenever you map with kinesis kinesis is a single platform where you can consume the data from anywhere to anywhere right it is also one of the biggest tool behind redshift right these two are from amazon cloud aws and cassandra db right it's a separate platform again and Snowfall. Snowfall is also one of the cloud database which is available in uh, Azure and uh, GCP. I'm not aware of, uh, uh, sorry, which, which is available in Amazon and uh, GCP, not aware of the, the Azure, whether this Snowfall is available or not. Okay, so this Snowflake is lighter version where you can read and write the data from the, the, the petabyte lift. Right, JDBC is nothing but as a connector where you can connect out sources into the in-source. Kafka is one of the big data tool where we can uh, store the data and read the data. Redis is in-memory database. In-memory database, you know, whenever uh, people are writing a program, right, uh, they make the program should respond as much as faster. Just imagine this. Uh, if I want to read a uh, thousand products, just take the Amazon or Flipkart. So whenever you open that Amazon, you can see that uh, n number of products on screen at a time. Whenever you are scrolling up, it is continuously updating that information without any lag, right? Imagine that in a traditional form, whenever you are opening, that uh, the screen will send a request to the database to get first thousand records into the screen and render it back right so imagine that 
one million users are using the same way uh, same way the application so how many requests the applications will rise how many how much traffic it will generate for the database and how hard it is to process for the database right so to reduce it to scale it down and to uh, achieve the maximum speed what they will do you know uh, they won't kept everything in a database they will uh, developers and architects will build a separate platform just like in a different manner so that's uh, that, that that's a simple way just like whenever we are designing an architecture they will go just like this so they will keep database out of the source all right they will keep out database out of the source and they will make this database is flexible with in memory so the in memory is the first place where it is reading right and uh, the application server will go with the uh, n number of instances whatever it is it doesn't matter how many instances are running behind okay this is nothing but a cloud cluster elastic cloud computation cluster right whatever the the user they might be uh, there might be what we can say either laptop or mobile or anything else or tv right whatever the client here it doesn't matter right so smart tvs are also having the capacity of uh, what we can say capability of online shopping i mean to say e-commerce application load and perform that operations there Right, whatever the the environment. Of course, there might be something Alexa and uh, Echo Dot, Google Echo and Google Dots. So these are also having the capability of uh, place the orders in e-commerce platforms and uh, uh, send it back to you, send the invoice to your mail, or get the payments. Uh, I mean, they can make the payment on delivery and make it possible to you nowadays, right? So they can generate n number of uh, traffics to this, right? So it these are not uh, single things, right? So it, it, again, uh, it's a different platform to us. So I'm not going in depth here. I'm just explaining you the way how much traffic they can generate and how big the the architect job here to deal that the uh, high traffic, right? So. But these servers will read data from this but not write directly into this right why these are not directly writing so there is a database dispatcher database handler so what this database handler do you know this can always checks the data whether uh, whenever the request come into this one to store right this one to store or a place an order it will never directly place here or here it will check whether the order is available or not if the order is available so it can say okay order is available you can get the data from here or it can say to this okay uh, this guy is asking to load this order information you can send it back so that's the dead the, the, this redis will send it back or if the data is not available and it will do something just okay this guy is creating this order here so you can store this order information right once the, the information is stored here what it will do you know okay hey uh, i'm getting some requests to store the order so i'm done with it and you have to uh, keep the copy of this one just like it will send a token to this just like it will say a uh, response to the redis and redis will catch the information and hold it in a memory in memory in the sense it's nothing but a ram right so it will keep it is in a ram now it is available in ram so now these guys come to search for the bill or search for the product or reading the product information whatever it is directly happening from this now there is no much load on database database is running with the 100 percent capacity with the less load less traffic right this is a maximum achievement 
so if it reaches that the maximum stuff what it will what will happen you know it will create a dead block and the database will away from the application once the database will away from the application what will happen the complete application will drop so this is called uh what it is uh what we can say this is called a failure right so we are not supposed to keep the application is in a failure okay so even though we are taking this much of uh, uh, uh what it is this much of thing sometimes the applications might crash at the time whenever application crashed so the cloud computer i mean cloud uh, system will keep a copy of this one keep a snapshot of this complete application whenever it is reaching maximum level what it will do it will raise a new copy or a new application instance from this snapshot and it will divert the traffic into this one to uh, maintain the fault tolerance as much as possible fault tolerance in the sense uh, uh what what is recovery from the failure okay uh, what what we can say as a exact word uh, alternative for the failures zero failure is nothing but high fault tolerance in the sense if a machine is down it doesn't bother because there is another machine where it can take the traffic and where it can process it right so that's how the, the architecture will go now why i'm explaining this you know so now you can uh see how much data will generate here how much traffic will generate how much data so databases are using here in a high performance redis redis is using in a high performance all right so that is how it is getting into the redis okay this is a database but it will store in a in memory elastic search elastic search is also do the same but it is a document type database okay so it can get the information from uh, any of the above databases and keep that as a indexed form right so you can see that the uh, search engine in any of the application just like amazon and uh, flipkart whenever you are trying to search something it will respond once you stop typing immediately right of course sometimes it will uh, listing down some of the items which is which are matching while you are typing also right it is working that much faster because it is working with elastic search the search engine is mapped with elastic search all the products are indexed inside this elastic search elastic search will index all the items in a document form and store it along with its memory right that's a, again a separate uh, separate uh, block here for this right so there are multiple things in architecture so these are all are the supported things of course uh, here they are missing because it is not coming into this one because uh, it's going with um, any of the other sources or either it can go directly with this dbfs or s3 so the logger files right whatever the application logs are generated or error logs access logs application logs traffic logs and uh, uh, resource logs performance logs everything everything we can store into the cloud storage either s3 or uh, um, uh, somewhere else it is showing s3 here because right now the uh, the community version is running inside aws amazon web services okay azure uh, databricks is running along with azure right so at the time it will come up with uh, azure data tool i mean data storage tools right blob storage or something else file storage blob storage or containers whatever whatever something will come here right so uh, that's how these uh, things will come here to store right and uh, create a table in notebook what it is you know you can select all these stuffs whatever you want you can select and click on this so what it will do you know it will create a separate notebook to you to utilize the connections and everything it will connect it it, it will uh, pull that all connections and make everything possible to you in the notebook to go with the next steps all right it might be confused sometimes so what it will do you know this create table it will pull the data source okay and establish all the connections whatever required to do the next level operations and make it possible in a notebook right 
So in that notebook, you can start your work, right? So uh, right now I don't have anything. Let me show you something here with this. So right now uh, I'm going to, let me clear this first. Uh, clear the screen, come on, clear all drawings, close it. Okay, so uh, now you can see the tables. I don't have any tables here, right? So if I want to upload a file, right? So I can go into this and I can select something. Upload a file, there's nothing. Okay. Uh, let me show something here. Projects, PPS, portfolio, not portfolio, Python, Python, trainings. Uh, I think so we have some data, vaccination data, right? Where else we can go with this PPS projects? Yeah, data.csv. Of course, I'm not sure what kind of data it is, but I'm uploading. Right? The data.csv is uploaded now. It is available in file store. File store tables, data.csv. You can see the same thing here. So uh, it is saying uh, create table with UI. Don't try this because it will hang the machine because you have you don't have much uh, capable enough. Uh, computation engine here you can try with this create in the notebook create table in the notebook right so is that you can do that here while uploading i'm sorry uh or you can go with this dbfs so file store it is saying the same right file store table data.csv i can do the same so you can see this two file two options here either you can go with create table ui or you can go with ui don't try as i said go with this notebook so i have a notebook already but it is going to create a next notebook for me you can see this right so first notebook is mine right so it has created this dbfs example right so uh, it will create some overview information and it will establish all the connections and it will generate a simple spark thing for me spring simple spark data frame for me and if i run this right what will happen if i run uh, oh it is detached okay now i'm going to run this so it is running it is reading data from that data i mean that file going to place this here right you can see these all okay so here the header is false that's why uh, it is not showing something if you really want to get that we can see this all right just for information i'm saying to you you have to make this first column as row right so uh, first row is header here it is false make it true right and run it again now you can see right now it is clear right so just like uh, it has given all the thing, it has created a, a data frame and it is created a temp view for us to execute SQL commands, SQL queries, and it is ready now. Right. So this is this is the way how we can go with. Right. So it, 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 this is nothing but writing back. Okay. Uh, once your transformation is done, you are going to write back into the file or store back into the database or somewhere else, right? So that is nothing but write, data frame dot write. We'll see all these. So, but a basic skeleton is ready for you now. This is a smart way from this Databricks tool, right? So now you are aware of this all, right? How to create a table, a cluster I haven't shown you and notebook I have shown, right? So cluster is nothing but when you click on this cluster, create cluster or go into the compute, okay? And you can use the create cluster here. Both are same. It will never go with this one. With, with community edition, I can create only one cluster. I cannot create more than one, but you can do the same. You can see the same screen here or by clicking on this. All right. So whenever you are into this one, you have to give a name for this cluster that might be unique might not be overlapped with anything. 
and you can select that the version which is compatible with your project okay they can give maximum stuff whatever is available here so uh, sometimes gpu is useful gpu in the sense what is gpu some people might call it as a graphic process unit some might, some some people might call it as a general process unit okay the difference between graphic process and general process of course both are 90 percent same but the catcher speed is different okay so gpus 99 percent uh, graphic process and general purpose units are same because they can collect that uh, computation thing or a basic computation thing from the uh, cpu uh, basic computation uh, instructions from cpu and compute in the general purpose you know why general uh, gpus are faster than the cpu cpu is required to do a lot many actions lot many actions it is not related to the to only cpu on, only computation or uh, uh, logic process right it need to handle the all hardwares in the machine all other stuffs in the machine right it had to collect the instructions and uh, rearrange the instructions or it had to interact with all other stuffs along with gpu right when it is coming to the gpu gpu has only one task that it should compute the, the uh, given instruction and return back to the cpu that's it that's only the job for gpu that's why gpus are faster enough than cpu right so whenever gpu is available what cpu will do you know it will reduce that the uh, high level computations doing in a cpu uh, instead of doing that it can send the instructions to the dpu gpu hey i have this kind of big uh, a logical unit or uh, required to process big stuff. You can take care of this one. I can take care of something else. Just like they can share the information. And once the GPU is ready, hey, I'm done with this task. I'm returning back to you. Okay, I'll collect it and uh, return back to the uh, response, I mean, uh, respective screen or respective area. Okay, just like the shake hand will establish like this in between the GPU and CPU at the time. Okay. So uh, this is how these two are going with. But whenever you are choosing a cluster, you have to be aware of whether you need a GPU or not, because adding GPU will add more, more, uh, or it is expensive to the uh, vendor, right? I mean to say not vendor or to the employer or the business, right? We have to be aware of the business first before going to use it, right? So most probably they will go with uh, LT edition or LTS edition, long time sustain. Okay, so the LTS is 8.3, right? Runtime 8.3, Databricks runtime 8.3 is nothing but Scala 2.12 with Spark 30. Okay, Spark is a, a Apache Spark and Scala is a language which is built for Scala, sorry, which is built for Spark. Okay, so if you really want to change it, you can change here, all right? And here there are some more options, but here it is blocked all the stuff because it is in a uh, community edition, right? And available zones, you better to take auto whenever you are into uh, community edition. If you are in um, paid version or a licensed version, it's better to go with nearby uh, availability or some newer bias just just take it as an example right now we are into we, we are in india right south india right uh, aws and uh, azure and gcp these all guys are having the data centers in india as well but that data centers doesn't contain some kind of computation engines just like machine learning okay so take the example uh, uh, from azure Whenever you are building IoT application for smart cars or something else, so they will provide a green glass for shadow functionality, which can work faster than anything, right? So the shadow functionality is not available in India. That is available in Singapore uh, data center and uh, US data center. UK, I'm not sure, but Japan data center, it is available. China, I'm not sure again, because I haven't tried, right? So same way, if you are going with Azure, when you are you are trying to do 
some kind of stuff with uh, machine learning studio there is ml studio right in azure so if you are trying to do that the ml studio computation no is not available in india data center for azure okay that is only available in either eastern zone or western zone of us not even uh, eastern us is not available either it should be south or west right so these are the limitations now we have to be aware of that where to go with what right so majority of the cases they will take you with the uh, uh, most nearby stuff but sometimes architect will uh, tell you of course uh, i can say simply one thing uh, you are not the right person to create the the clusters and everything you have to raise a request to the administrative team the administrative team will take care of the cluster creation and everything whenever it required to you all right so but you have to aware of this one how to create and how to do this all the stuff because uh, interviewer definitely ask you a question uh, how to create uh, i mean i have this kind of requirement what kind of cluster i can create okay why not i can go with this cluster for this requirement okay they might ask you some kind of uh, real time questions with the scenario base we have to be aware of that why to create why not to create right so and uh, coming into this one spark environment so here you can see the uh, spark configurations if you really want to get some kind of configurations or you want to place other configurations or add other configurations you have to apply like this so you can see still here is a configuration property and after the space there is a configuration value right just like you have to assign it and uh, in the second box environment variables so these environment variables are nothing but anything these are the global values where you can reuse or utilize while you are running that the cluster right so just like uh, here they are going to give the java options right the java options are nothing but the environment java environment java jre environment jdk environment and maps and uh, temp locations swap locations everything they can go with this one right but right here they are just showing to you to assign whatever the fresh environment based on that it can go but here these are not added to you for now this is empty okay this is empty these two boxes are empty if you want you can go with right i'm not taking anything and uh, once you are ready with filling all this you can create on this cluster uh, let me take some name here so that it can get available all right why okay uh, i have this already that's why okay the cluster uh, i have a cluster which is running that's why this is not available it, it is saying that see you have reached maximum number of achieve clusters i mean active clusters we need to say there is an active cluster you cannot create more than one because you are into the uh, community addition that's what it is saying here right so whatever you have selected here you can see the same thing in a json form see this is a json form whatever the information you are having everything is in the same so the cluster name the spark version so the configurations of the spark aws attribute because it is running in aws right so that's why it is showing aws okay so all the remaining things right so if you go with the same in ui you can see just like this right so once you create cluster it will uh, it will come and sit here right you can see the status is running the green dot will show that the cluster is running and um, nodes how many spots i have only one one node nothing much right and the runtime 8.3 which is a uh, spark 3.1 and scala 2.1 2.12 right driver is a community edition driver community workers so this means uh, which slot you are running this cluster right and creator who creates this based on the user it can say right so and how many notebooks are uh, connected with this cluster you can see that two right because uh, two notebooks whatever the notebook we are doing here and whatever the the notebook we have created from data store right those two or connected with this one okay and other actions if you want to stop this or terminate it you can 
uh, if you want to refresh the cluster, refresh in the sense somewhere, some times it might struck or some process might start. So by doing the refresh, what it will do, you know, it will flash all the junk data and it will restart everything. So you can create a duplication. I mean to say you can create a new cluster from this. It's a just clone option or you can terminate it completely. Right. So these are the actions. Okay. All clusters which are available in your uh, environment in your account or created by whoever created by are accessible for you. Right. Based on these filters, you can see the clusters. Most probably it should be created by you because you are the owner for this account. That's why it is for you. And coming into the job clusters. So as of now, there are no clusters because um, there, there, there are no jobs are running here. So if something is going uh, just like some jobs are running, uh, just let me open this notebook. Okay, the second notebook. Okay. Uh, let me take it off. Let me keep it here. So hope you can see the screen, the two screens, right? So if I run this, most probably whenever it is running. Sorry? Only one screen. Okay, no problem. Uh, here, uh, we haven't seen any jobs because there are no jobs are created here, right? That's why it is not showing any jobs here. But whenever we are running, uh, 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 you can see something here. So here you can see two jobs are started, job four and job five, right? Inside this, you can see uh, how many are running, stage four and stage five. While it is running, you can see that the uh, different stuffs here. Right, it is getting faster than enough. Okay, uh, see, uh, stages one of one. Sometimes the stages might reach uh, 10 stages, 14 stages. So these are nothing but clusters. Sorry, uh, cluster nodes. Okay, so the nodes, uh, the listed jobs are uh, list here where it is. Whenever the jobs are listed, the job related computations or nodes are listed here. Right. So once we have availability to create that cluster, uh, that nodes, we can come to know of that. Apart of that, we have recent actions, whatever the recent uh, things we did here, recent notebooks or recent uh, uh, tables or whatever. You can see all the recent works, mean to say the history, right? And the such, such is nothing but you can search anything here. Okay, so uh, I can say it is returning the, the first notebook. When I hit F, whatever the F is matches with, it is simply returned, right? This is nothing but a search. Data, as you've seen, you can create a table just like whatever you are seeing here, just like the same. And computation for cluster, right? And jobs, whatever we have seen, right? And only the settings, what we have to see. We'll see it tomorrow. All right, this is about the uh, Databricks UI. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining in, in depth because you have to aware of the UI and environment. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, uh, that's it for today. Uh, if you have any doubts, just you can ask me. Okay, I'll take that as no. Okay, then we'll wrap this class. We'll join tomorrow. So do one thing. You guys can join as uh, better by 7.30 so that we can wrap the call by 8.30. All right. Hello. Okay. Okay, guys. So, then. 